How's it going? Hans Schaff here with Go Tiny Be Free, and I'm here at the Cottages of Pine Lake on the lake here in the Incredit Cottage, which is going to be a future Airbnb. And you can see there's the fountain there in the background and uh, some of the tiny homes there in the background dotted around the lake. And you can kind of see it's a little bit gloomy out there today. This is the aftermath of the hurricane. Got a little bit of wind whipping around and uh, got a little over an inch of rain so far. So um, it's finally brought us a little bit of rain. It's been kind of nice because it's been so dry here for the last uh, several weeks. Haven't had really any rain at all here. Um, but we're actually, you can kind of see the lake level actually going down a little bit. We are actually letting it go down right now uh, because there's been some grasses there on the north end, the shallower side of the lake. And, uh, you know, basically there was no lake there beginning of the year. And uh, so the grass were able to kind of establish and kind of get uh, get rooted. And then, of course, all the water just helped to give it plenty of water so it could keep growing and not die off in this kind of uh, semi drought that we've been having. So anyway, we're just going to go ahead and uh, let it uh, drain down a little bit further. And that will make it a little easier to clear up around the lake. And we'll pull out all those weeds and those grasses that are growing. And uh, then we'll be able to flood the lake back and get above that level so that the future grasses and things can't establish because the lake level will be too high and they'll all be underwater. So uh, that's the plan there for the lake. But you can see that fountain is just going 24 hours a day. We just love that fountain there. The lights are shining on it and it's just so calming and peaceful, especially when you get around the north side of the lake. And I'm going to let you guys know right now I've got several people that I'm going back and forth with. But officially, I've still got one lake lot left, possibly two. So right over here, you can kind of see get my face out of the way uh there are let's see there's one lot in here right now currently available possibly two but i think that lot is about to go anytime in fact both these lots may go anytime but as of exactly this moment right now as i'm recording this video we do have one of those lots still available for a 24 foot tiny house on wheels there you can see the charleston with the new deck out front look at how neat that looks um, I'll probably try and put some pictures in here if I've got some time, but I want to get you a video update. It's been a while since I've been able to do an update. Just been so busy around the property. You'll see why in a minute if I haven't already shown, shown you this new footage of what we're doing over here, just in front of the, uh, in the Airbnb section here. But, um, just a whole lot going on here around the lake and, um, right here at the cottage of Pine Lake, just having a good time. New residents coming in. We've got, uh, right now living on site. I think we've got 12 people, um, currently on site. More homes are still coming. We've got, I think one home coming this next week and two others that are under construction that should be here this month as well. So the month of October, we'll probably have four more residents or more joining us here on the property. Um, at, in addition to these couple lots that are coming available, if people have homes for those lots ready to go, we might get those two people to go ahead and um, show up here in a matter of weeks as well. So anyway, things are progressing here like crazy. Uh, and we're gonna be shifting our focus a little bit as it becomes fall and winter. And it gets a little more hard, it gets a little more difficult to develop lots anyway. We're, we're going to shift our focus a little bit over the winter to focus more on the amenities and developing things for the existing residents that are here. Because a lot of them have been living here since May. And we have some amenities in place, but we've been so focused on development of the lots and trying to get the houses in here. We haven't spent a lot of time developing some of the amenities like the hot tubs, um, the fire pit area, you know, things like that. So we've got a few basic things in place for them, but we want to put some more things in place for the residents who are currently here. And uh, they'll be here for the new residents that'll be coming on the property as well. So just trying to get a few of those amenities put ahead. So we're gonna shift our focus and work more on that. And then resume lot development, probably in the spring, something like that. Once the uh, the bulk of the weather and the cold weather and the rains and all that has kind of subsided and the lakes filled up quite a bit more. So excited for all that to happen. But anyway, just wanna get you a quick video here and a quick, some, some video updates. I'm gonna put as much additional footage here in this video as I can, uh, but I do wanna get this out. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time editing because I just wanna get this information out to people so you can kind of see what's going on here at the Cottage of Pine Lake. Just busy, busy, busy. Lots of things going on, super exciting. And uh, we're just, uh, just going. So anyway, I hope you're having a great time. Um, hope everyone's safe from the hurricane and all that. And uh, we haven't had many impacts here at all. It kind of went just to the uh, northeast of us here, went around the property. We got a little bit of rain, not as much as we kind of were hoping for, um, but uh, we'll take it and uh, it's all good. So anyway, take care. Hans Schaff from the cottages at Pine Lake. Go tiny, be free. Stay tuned. Here at the front of the property, you're familiar with this view there of the lake in the background and the tiny houses here in the front, but something new I want to show you that you may not have seen yet. 
Check this out. We've got the front fence in place. This is the fence that's going to separate the Airbnbs from the private residence. There's going to be a gate, 20 foot gate right through here. And then you've got this fence right through here. And you've got uh, one Airbnb house that's, you've got one house here that's going to be, that's Jim's house, it's going to be an Airbnb. So there's a gap between the fence there to access this home, which is an Airbnb. Because in time, that fence is going to go all the way across as it's going to be a full time residence of Jim and Annette in the future. So when that happens, we'll close that fence up. But for now, the uh, guests for the Airbnb for them and themselves will be able to park on this side of the fence to use as an Airbnb. You have a nice deck back in there and it goes to wraps around the, uh, the back of their home. It's going to be real neat. They're coming in a few weeks time to get that taken care of. But uh, you've got that 20 foot gate and there's also a walking gate around here that I'll show you. For those who are walking their dog or just want to walk around the property, walk a little further here. And can we see it in the picture there? I think you can see there's a little small opening in the fence there, way over there. So for those who want to walk around the lake, you'll have uh, be able to use your key card and we'll walk through there uh, by for foot traffic. And then of course for car traffic, there'll be a little place to kind of scan your code or, or scan your key or put your code in in order to open the sliding gate that will be beyond here as well for access to the private part of the property. So they're getting that in place here as we are now developing the Airbnb section of the property. So again, that's going to separate. This is we're right here behind me. This is the south side or the, the south side of the property. So this there's an incredible cottage that will be an Airbnb. And we're gonna have seven Airbnbs in here and well eight for right now and then and then long term will be seven as Jim's home converts to a more permanent uh, residence there. So we'll have seven in the front. Uh, right now we have uh, we'll have three Airbnbs on property. We have a fourth one coming here in the next week or two, and we'll have four Airbnbs that will be opening up here on the property for people to to stay in and visit our property, staying in those homes in the next several weeks or month or so. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, Jim over here, they're gonna be working on their deck here in the next few weeks as well. Perhaps by November, I think is when they're trying to get their home ready. And I think that that uh, in credit cottage right there will be ready for Airbnb about the same time. So we're kind of looking around early November. Uh, we'll start being able to have some Airbnbs available for rent here on the property for people to come stay and take a look. So, you know, clear your calendar, you know, start looking ahead and start planning and um, stay tuned. We'll let you know when these homes are available, when they're, you know, when they're all decorated and they've got the furnishings in there and everything else like that. And we'll have the parking all set up and all ready in here. So let me kind of walk you through, for those of you kind of looking at the development of this property, how we're doing this. There's a pretty good parking area right in through here. So we're approaching that, that front gate. So right here, there will be parking right along here for, for this Airbnb right here. There's going to be a sign, sorry, my hands right along this, these two planks right here. That's kind of at an angle. There'll be a cottages at Pine Lake sign right here. And there'll be parking spots, you know, for the next about those 25 feet or so right there for that home. And then the next home is going to be slotted in right through here. And there'll be parking in front over here as well for, uh, for that home there. And we keep on walking down here and there'll be, there'll be homes slotted in here. Every 30 feet or so will be another lot, 30, 35 feet or so. And they're pretty deep. So what we're going to do... Rather than, because it's the Airbnb section, it's going to be really nice looking. I'm going to set this down so I can kind of point without having to hold the camera here. Um, okay, so rather than people kind of parking like right next to the, the Airbnb, which, you know, so you have a nice parking spot. You know, we don't need a, a waterfront parking spot. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to back up the parking. There's going to be a fence. It's going to go right along the front of these Airbnb houses. You know, so it'll be about maybe five or ten feet or so in front of the home. That'll, you know, so people can decorate them real nice, put a nice little pathway, maybe have some hammocks or a little sitting area or something like that. Um, some, you know, fairy lights up in the trees or something. So everyone is going to decorate their, their Airbnb a little bit differently. And so each one will have kind of its own theme, its own unique style, its own color, all that kind of thing. So that every time you come out here, you can, you know, ex experience tiny house living a little different way, different house, different style, different size. So, um, but anyways, rather than putting the car parking next to the, right on the lake, next to the homes and kind of cluttering that space up, we're going to actually pull the homes back. We've got plenty of space up here off this main road. So the parking will be closer to the main road right here. And then there'll be a fence between the parking and the, and the home. So you have to actually walk through a small little you know, gate along the pathway to the front door of your home and be able to see the nice decorations and you know, landscaping and all that that people will be doing for their own Airbnb home as they put it up on Airbnb. So that's going to be something a little bit different than we had anticipated before. Originally, we had, we had envisioned you know, having the, the street an access uh, street go right in front of those homes 
and then having parking next to the homes, but there's plenty of space and we don't want to kind of clutter it up like that because it'll look much nicer for the car parking to be all together away from the homes and let the homes kind of all be together. It'll visually enhance the whole Airbnb section and just make the whole property look nicer in general. And we got the space for it here in the front. This is the biggest area we've got in the entire property. So we're just going to repurpose that a little bit, uh, reorganize, restructure kind of that parking area to a better, to utilize that area, that space better. So now next to this taller fence right here, this is going to be, there's going to be a dumpster here in front for the Airbnb. So they've got a place to, to put their trash. They'll have to come into the property to access the other dumpsters for the private residents. They'll have their own dumpsters and trash removal services. They'll uh, have their own Wi-Fi network and password as well. So it's not going to be, you know, uh, connected to the uh, residents, uh, Wi-Fi and password and all that. They're going to have their own separate internet password and all for, uh, you know, doing their streaming services and things that you do in an Airbnb. And then as you can see that fence back there, right there on the edge of the property, we're going to be putting those 40 foot, nine foot tall shipping containers for storage. And, um, you know, with all this hurricane activity and things that have been going on, the devastation that we're seeing up there in North Carolina and Tennessee, uh, in Florida as well, lots of areas has been, been hugely affected. It really underscores the importance of being prepared. And how do you do that in a tiny house? You've only got so much space. You don't want to have, you know, utilize a whole bunch of your uh, living space for uh, for preps and things like that that you, you know, will not use on a daily basis. But, you know, in case there's an emergency, that's when you would want to use it. So we're go in the storage containers we're going to have here on site, we're going to set aside an entire section, a climate controlled section of these, of these uh, storage units specifically for the community to put their preps aside in. So we're going to have a special area um, that's only going to be for community tools, you know, for people who want to put their rakes and shovels and things like that, for to do landscaping for their homes, homes and, all, and stuff like that. We'll have a section for those kind of property-wide tools that people kind of have access to and share. And we're also going to have a section for uh, prep items, tools and, you know, extension cords and food and water, you know, filters and things like that, things that people might need in case of an emergency. So we want to be able to have that set aside a section where the community will have access to that and if the power goes out or some, some, some tragedy happens, people will be able to access these shared items and uh, be able to take care of each other, take care of themselves, and better weather the storm, so to speak. Okay, so let's... So here I'm, gonna, I'm walking, kind of see how big the space is. Here's the, the, the main road into the property. That home is going to be going into the back of Phase 1B. It's got a few other things we're doing to it here. And of course, there's the Incredit Cottage. And you can kind of see where this car is parked right here. We've got plenty of parking space. So you're going to have these parking spaces off this main road and there's going to be a nice little fence, probably a split rail fence or something, or a two panel fence. That's, you know, and, if, and so each home will have its own little passageway, you know, four foot wide gate essentially where, uh, you know, guests will be able to park their car in front of the fence, you know, take all their belongings and all and just kind of walk about, you know, 10 feet or so into the tiny house. So what's going to happen is for guests, for Airbnb guests, they're going to pull into the property and then boom, they're going to be presented with this beautiful vision of all these tiny houses, seven or eight completely different, unique tiny houses, different colors, different styles and all that. They're going to be a nice little fence in front with some beautiful landscaping and all. And these people are going to pull right up and be able to just be, be awed and inspired by just pulling right up. They're going to park their car. They're going to unload their belongings, bring their suitcase or two, walk through the little walkway, walk along the little path, up the steps and into their tiny house and be able to see the lake all behind it and all this. And uh, then each resident will have, you know, an additional... 10 or 15 feet or whatever on each on uh, the side of the home where they'll be able to put some additional items, whether, you know, it could be a picnic table, it could be a little bench, it could be a little sitting area, it could be a little water fountain, you know, all different things I envision people being able to do. The additional benefit of that is it gives your tiny house residents somewhere else to spend their time. They're not just inside your small tiny house. They actually, you know, can be outside enjoying the outdoors because we've got great weather here in Alabama. So it's a beautiful space in the evenings. You can see the sunset in the morning, see the sunrise. You've got the lake and the fountain in the background. So it's going to be a great space to utilize the indoor space and the outdoor space for your Airbnb guests. And I think by kind of changing it this way and pulling the road back a little bit and pulling the parking back, it'll just make it that much nicer to be able to, you know, have this undisturbed or kind of manicured, a landscaping and environment uh, that people I think will enjoy more than seeing a bunch of cars kind of parked, you know, house, car, house, car. Uh, I think it'll just add to the experience for these guests who want to stay here and experience what it's like to live at the Cottage of Pine Lake. So uh, that's kind of an update there. Um, all right, here we go. Some more grass carp. Help eat the grasses and the weeds. And you're free. Here go the rest of them. Here they go. Go tiny, be free. <laughs>